Some things were just meant to go together. Peanut butter and jelly, Hall and Oats, Rob Thomas fans and poor taste, and also arpeggios and chord voicing. So today, we're just gonna learn one arpeggio, two chord voicings, and link them together to work our way through the fretboard, and it's gonna sound like this. seem difficult it's really not and we're gonna go over some of the shapes that kind of make that possible so the first one is really a very simple D minor arpeggio and it's not even a I mean you can think of it as a piece of a scale or an arpeggio it doesn't really matter we're starting on a D which is the fifth fret of the A string and we're taking the first three notes of the D minor scale so 5a 7a 8a which is a D an E and an F then we're gonna add the fifth right here, which is an A. And then we're gonna go down a string to the octave and play the same notes that we played the first three, one, two, three, right? Except we're gonna play them out of order. We're gonna go one, three, two. So one, two, three, five, one, three, two, okay? And now the fingering doesn't really matter. In fact, how you kind of phrase these with which fingers you use kind of has a big impact on the sound. So the way I kind of do it most of the time is I'll start with my pointer finger and I'll hammer down to that second note and then I'll slide one, right? So because that brings my middle finger in line with the fifth. So I've got five, seven, eight, down a string and then I can go straight down, slide to that third note after the octave and that lines my pointer finger up to grab the second note in the scale, right? So we've got. Okay, one more time. And the cool thing is, so when I'm picking, I'm just playing a finger style. You can use a pick, do the exact same thing. I've got a hammer on and a slide. So I'm just picking one string. I'm picking the D string, and then I'm picking the G string, and just going pick, slide, pull off. So you can do it fast because there's only one pick per string, right? Pick, pick, pick. Right, and if you just drill it a few times, you'll get really fast at it. And you can do this over a couple different minor chords, right? Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this to a chord voicing. And this is gonna be a G7, a dominant seven chord voicing. Your middle finger is gonna be on three A, your pointer finger is gonna be on, or three E, your pointer finger is gonna be on two A, your ring finger is gonna be on three D, and your pinky is gonna be on four G. So it's a four string voicing, right? Now, I know this is a G seven because I have the G. It's major third B. It's dominant seven, the flat seven right there, and an octave B. So I'm implying the fifth. There's no D in this chord. And the more important thing about this chord is it exposes the key I'm in as being in the key of C because a seven chord can only technically exist in a key as the five chord. So I have a D minor to a G seven. So the progression would be in the key of C, D would be two, I have a two to a five, right? And all we're gonna do is after we do the, the arpeggio minor scale run or however you wanna look at it, we're gonna go to this voicing. play it one note at a time instead of playing it all together. I'm just kind of going, and I'm switching it every time to kind of keep it fresh. I'm going E, D, A, E, G. Right, and if you want more of a, a burst feel, if you don't want those notes to blend together, just kind of mute them after you hit it, so. All right, so all together we have. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this with another voicing of the exact same chord. We're gonna go all the way up here to this bar chord uh, dominant seven voicing. Now my root note is still a G, 10 A. I'm gonna make a power chord right there, so 12 D. I'm gonna bar this so it's 10 G and then 12 B. But what I really wanna grab to kinda open it up a little bit 
is I'm gonna take that root note away and I'm just gonna be left with these three notes here. So I arrived at this voicing thinking of a G7, but I kind of like the sound of this better. Even though it's kind of changing the chord. Really what I'm left with is a, a B half diminished. I don't even have to think of that. I'm thinking of a chord voicing I might be more familiar with and I'm connecting it here. And now I'm gonna slide back. The illusion of movement is something that's important, especially when you're switching between chord voicings. So if you have a hard time kind of going from this voicing to this one, just kind of drill them back and forth. And eventually your fingers are just gonna kind of find the, the commonalities between them. For instance, right here, the thing that I think of in helping me get from here to here is that my ring finger can walk the entire way down the D string, right? So in this voicing, my ring finger's on 3D. In this one, it ends up being on 12D. So this can kind of, I can track this chord along with my ring finger. Now I'm exaggerating it just to kind of show how it gets, it gets there. Eventually you probably want to be a little more efficient with your fingers. Like my fingers aren't really leaving the string. They're just kind of gathering around here. So a good practice thing to do would be go from here to here and back. Right, and that's a good way to kind of train maybe your hand to get into different voicings uh, from previous ones, right? So what we're gonna do all together now is we're gonna have the D arpeggio into the first voicing. And I'm gonna get into this voicing and I'm just gonna maybe hit the D string. I'm just gonna play around in it. That's the beautiful thing about chord voicings is you don't have to make them sound like a chord. You know a shape and the shape is giving you the notes, but you can pick the notes. You can kind of just hit them and kind of slide them back. There's a lot of different ways. Chord voicings aren't just for playing them as chords. It's kind of like the important thing to take away from here, right? So eventually it all kind of coalesces into maybe more of like a lead thing, just kind of an interesting way to use one scale and one chord, two different voicings to kind of come up with what I think is kind of like a cool little jam type thing, right? So we got the D to G7. Back to the scale. And then maybe I just stay here. Then again. I can go here. maybe right there it's just something different it's just really it's not about learning one specific thing it's just about kind of having available options to you so what I did at the end there is just now I know that I just came from this note so why not just kind of do a little flourish there and I also know that since we're in the key of C the all the open strings are there to help you which means all the open strings here would be fair game they're all in that key right so I'm just kind of taking my ring finger, hitting the octave bar, the 12th fret, and just kind of moving it backwards to kind of make like a sound to get you to the next place, right? So. just a couple different ideas. Now, the last thing I want to say about this arpeggio, uh, since we're in the key of C, D is the two, right? So we're not really using the D minor scale. Technically, we're using the D Dorian scale, but as far as the notes we're using, the one, the two, the three, the flat three, and the five, Dorian and minor are the exact same thing. But the reason that's kind of important is because I can only really technically do this move and stay in a key on either the two chord or the six chord, which in any key, the minor chords are two, three, and six. Now, if I were to do this on the three, if I wanted to start with an E, right, we can kind of repeat this shape anywhere for any kind of minor chord. If I did it on an E, like an E minor, what I'm it, it could sound good and you might want to keep it, but what I'm doing here is I'm getting an E, I'm going right to a G, and then an F sharp. So that F sharp isn't in the key, whatever, you know what I mean? Use, learn a couple shapes. Uh, if you hit a note that's out of the key, sometimes it could sound even better. But uh, basically uh, the main takeaway is just to learn a few voicings, kind of play around in those voicings 
attach them to arpeggios and scales that you know, and eventually you can kind of incorporate them into your lead playing or just make your playing more interesting.